Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I'm going to be showing you this demo that I did a while ago, another one of my favourites of this urban landscape. It's quite moody, a sort of film noir style. It's a style that I love, but I've never really taken any further. So let me know in the comments if you'd like me to maybe see if I can get back into painting something similar, um, sort of an updated version. And I'll see if I can remember how to paint this sort of thing. It's very different from what I normally paint. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, it's a little bit longer than usual, but it's all fully narrated and lots of fun. Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a cityscape, a sort of nighttime cityscape, hopefully, um, with a sort of a film noir kind of um, vibe going on if I can. I'm going to start off just roughly sketching in some sort of perspective lines for the street and maybe indications as to where some of the buildings will go. But I'll, I'll kind of make this one up as I go along. I want to keep it fairly loose. I've done a few of these now. I'm still not very familiar with the genre, but I'm going to try and keep this one a little bit um, lighter and less overworked than other ones that I've um, painted in the past. So all I'm doing here is giving myself a sort of a guide to paint along. Um, I want a gap between the buildings um, at the back on, on the left where we're going to get sort of light in the sky. And obviously light is going to be reflected all over the place. I think that's what interests me about nighttime cityscape scenes is the way the light bounces around from street lamps, from the, the glow in the sky, um, on, the, on the pavement, the windows of the shops, the buildings, all, all that sort of thing. I think I'll just about do. I'm going to have at least one car in this as well. That'd be the first time that I've painted um, a car for YouTube. I've done a few before and um, I still find them a bit difficult, but I'm going to give it a go because I want to be able to get better at painting things like cars, lorries, vans, that sort of thing, boats, etc. So that I can feel, be free to um, paint whatever scene I want to. So it's a matter of trying to learn how to tackle some of these things that are out of my comfort zone. I won't be painting anything exactly in this, just nice loose impressions, hopefully. I want to make sure my car is sitting flat on the road. Maybe a couple of um, hints of, of shop fronts, things like that. And once I've got this all sort of laid out, then I can go in and put a first wash down. I'm probably going to have some figures, not quite sure where. I'll, um, I'll go with that once I've got the base, basic painting done and decide where to put the figures because they will be going in, in in silhouette, probably a few in the distance over here. I'd imagine that I'll put some street lamps in, that sort of thing too. So the first thing I'll do is wet the paper all over. I don't mind if it's not completely wet. Um, I'll be looking for um, nice blurry diffusions of colour, but also some hit and miss with the paintbrush. So I get some dry brush for different textures, that sort of thing. That's my large Chinese Harky brush. It's short bamboo handled. I found it on online, um, on eBay. I think it's a goat hair brush. This is burnt sienna. So I'm going to establish my areas of light first. Light in the sky at the back between the buildings and in the distance. Reflected light on the buildings and some light in the shop window reflected down on the pavement. I'm only going to be using two colours for this painting, Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna. This is the Payne's Grey. So I'll work around the areas of light that I've painted 
using vertical lines and sort of diagonal lines that follow the perspective that I loosely mapped out earlier. The paper's all nice and wet, so we're using the wet in wet technique here. As you can see, the paint is softly diffusing as I um, apply darker paint here and there, um, or move it around, or add just little touches, just trying to build up some interesting tones and textures while still keeping the feeling of a city street. I'm not painting the car, I'm trying to keep that white paper at the moment and I want to keep some sort of bits and bobs of white paper here and there as well um, to add sparkle and freshness to the painting. I've changed to my half inch or no three quarter inch flat brush and I'm using it to add some smaller thinner lines here and there that will still diffuse out into the wet paper and paint. Clean out my brush and lift out a few areas as well. Just lighten up here and there still keeping with mostly the vertical brush strokes and then those that are following the perspective of the street towards the vanishing point which would be somewhere in the distance where it's where we've got the um the burnt sienna glow Introducing some nice dark panes grey across the top on the left. Which again is, is softening out and diffusing, but because it's really rich paint, it's staying there and giving me a nice dark edge there. This is virtually tube consistency burnt sienna. And that's giving me, or will give me, my really good bright reflected light. Um, suggested on the sort of shop window and windows above and on the other side. Bringing some light down so that that will diffuse gently below the shop and be like reflected light on the street. I'm not really looking for wet pavements here so much as just light bouncing around um, here and there. Just dabbing out a, a little bit where the paint's gone into where I'm going to put a headlamp on that car. So I just want to keep that nice and, and light. Maybe just dab out a little bit here and there with the tissue, but I'm not going to overdo this. I want to keep this nice and soft. I don't really want any hard lifting out marks to really show too much at the end. So where I'm lifting with the tissue, I'm literally just grazing the paper and paint. I'm nearly there now. I'm just using the flat brush again to emphasize the perspective, add a few more darks in, um, softening out some lines here and there, maybe establishing the end of the street in the distance. The edge of the edge, edge of the uh, pavement there, where the shop meets the pavement. Just soften up the edge of the building there as well, slightly. And then lastly, some tube consistency Payne's grey on the flat brush to really draw attention to that shop window that sort of area of the shop window, the car, and a, and a, a character there, a figure, are hopefully going to be my focal point. Now that's done, I'll leave it to dry completely, switch the camera off, and then come back as soon as it's dry.
it's now completely dry. You can see it's dried back beautifully, nice and soft and a lot lighter than when I put the paint on. And that was why I had to go in so dark. Off camera, I've drawn in a couple of small cars. Um, just kind of need those, I think, to balance the composition up. And to do that with the pencil, I just copied the lines that I had made for my first car, very small for the background one and larger for the one on the foreground on the left. Right, first thing first is to paint in the cars. So I'm, I'm going to feel my way with this because, as I say, I'm not used to painting cars, but I've got a rough idea. I've practiced a few times in my sketchbook. So I'm going to use paint grey and my small calligraphy brush and just work across my drawing, making sure I leave enough lights and trying to just keep it nice and loose so it doesn't look too detailed. But it's sort of in the foreground, so I need to make sure that it looks convincing enough as a car. I'm going to try and leave unpainted paper or at least the background colour underneath showing through for things like the headlamps, some of the windscreen, although that will be sort of have reflected light on it, and some light bounce on the bonnet and roof of the car. All these cars are facing the same direction. The idea is that this is a sort of one way street. putting in some nice shadows um, underneath the car, underneath like across the tyres and into the road and that hopefully will um, make sure that my car looks as if it's sort of properly parked up on the road. Little adjustments here and there, just trying to leave a bit of sort of um, paler paper where there's kind of like maybe a radiator grill or a number plate that sort of thing well, i'm fiddling about a little bit trying to get it right but hopefully the more i paint cars the easier they'll get and i'll be able to paint them uh, more more confidently if you find that this is a bit problematic, try it out a few times in your sketchbook first until you get used to painting them. I'm using very pale, much more watery paint to paint this distant car now and only painting in just the merest few suggestions of lines. So that will give me my sense of distance and aerial perspective. If you find that the paint you're using is too dark for a distant car, just quickly blot it out with tissue gently and that should just lighten things back a bit. And now the third car going to do exactly the same just painting over my pencil lines trying to make sure there's enough shadow but enough white unpainted paper to show the reflected light the headlamps the windshield a little bit of gap between the tires and the shadow on the road that sort of thing Feeling a bit more confident now. I think these two have turned out much better than the first car, but that just goes to show how practice and repeating, painting the same sort of thing can really um, help you to progress. I'm just gonna dab that car out a bit, just see if I can um, get a bit more life into it. So I'll dab a bit of paint out and then go back in 
and strengthen up some of the dark areas um, whilst keeping a little bit more of it a bit paler. And that's just a bit of burnt sienna going into the nearer car in the shadows, uh, just for, for a little bit of the ref warmer reflected light. This is my small calligraphy brush and I'm going to paint in the street lamps and a few maybe telegraph wires, um, distant poles and posts, signposts, that sort of thing. I'm trying to keep this line um, vertical but quite sketchy so it looks like there might be some notices or something attached to it. Um, it'll need a bit of shadow. Just a few sort of details and non-details really, it's what I like to say, something and nothing. And following the perspective, going back into the distance with things getting smaller, um, I'm putting in another street lamp, fainter and paler and shorter as it goes back into the distance. Keeping it as loose as I can just dab that one out a bit so that it does sort of recede so it looks paler than this um, dark one at the front. Just a few sort of random lines here and there in the background. Just if they go in a bit funny then smudge them out. Um, some telegraph poles, lines and lights going across between the streets. soften those back a little bit so that they sort of blur out so we've still got those distant verticals but they are much softer now those sort of random lines um, for telegraph wires and things like that just kind of join each side of the streets together in this kind of loose semi-abstract way. I'm just going to darken up that wall, this side on this edge. I think I'm nearly done now from for, for this stage before I put the people in. And now with my small harky brush, Payne's Grey uh, brushed lightly and in a slight diagonal across the bottom left corner of the road to introduce some shadows of buildings. Then I'm going to pull some, um, some shadows down from the, across the road, across the shadows where the cars are and just quickly while the paint's wet, um, just flashing in some shadows for pavement pavement area softening back as well so that that doesn't sort of stop as a harsh line and then pulling um, with a wet brush and a small amount of paint vertical strokes down so I still keep that sort of the look of sort of re reflected light on the road and the pavement there. Pulling down a bit of shadow for the distant car, that's too dark. So I'll just lighten that up a bit. And lastly, I'm taking the corner of a store card and I'm going to scrape through that damp paint and create some texture lines, some kind of lines that run across 
the road and just give me a little bit more variety and creates a sort of a more foreground texture for the road. And I think that will do for the roadway. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to move on to the sides of the buildings and I'm going to just put in a few vertical brush strokes just to indicate a few windows, window ledges, that sort of thing. I don't want this painting to be very detailed, but I would like to break up some of those walls with a few verticals here and there just to imply those windows. I'm almost happy with this, um, apart from the figures, but just want to just adding a few more details just to kind of link in with um, the things like the cars and the um, street lamps, that sort of thing. Just sort of smudge through that so it doesn't look too hard or harsh with a tissue. Just this is the small Harky brush, more Payne's grey, very dilute, just adding to that look of the buildings, following perspective lines, keeping it nice and pale, just working around those marks in and around until I'm sort of happy with look, it looking like sort of more buildings going into the distance. I've just left it to dry completely um, and I'm quite happy with that. I now just need to put in the figures and then some highlights. So I'm taking my small Harky brush and I'm just checking the height of my figure with my horizon line and where my vanishing point is. So I make sure that I get my figures um, to the correct size and the correct scale in proportion, but also in perspective. I'm not painting a person really, I'm just painting uh, brush strokes that kind of will resemble a person. Two people here. This couple are next to the car, so I'm making sure that I've got their feet on the pavement at a level, same level as the car's tyres are on the, on the road, so to speak. And then I'll put a shadow across, which will just ground them. The shadow will, of course, go in the same direction as the car, of the shadow of the car. I'm being careful with this couple because really they are the, I suppose, the main focal point um, as they're standing next to that light shop window and next to the car that is in, um, in, the, in the light of the street lamp. I've now taken some very pale Payne's grey and I'm just suggesting a few figures across the back of the painting in the distance I'm keeping them in the same sort of um, perspective and proportion so they're this is you know the street here is flat so the figures are going to be their heads are going to be at the same level as these figures here closer to us Payne's grey dry brushed across the bottom corner just will add that extra dark shadow that I need to bring the painting together and finally, this is tube consistency white gouache for highlights. I'm putting the highlights 
um, in the street lamps, um, a few little dots and dashes here and there on the buildings to um, suggest lights in the windows or reflected light on the glass. I don't want to overdo this, but I want enough highlights and dots and dashes just to um, freshen the painting up and bring it together a bit. And this is where I get the chance just to give the cars a little bit of a lift with a few highlights of light on the roofs, um, in the headlamps, just a bit of reflected light on the bodies of the car cars here and there. And that's just brought them out of that one, particularly out of the shadows a bit more. Not too much on the one in the distance. And then a couple of dots and lines here and there on the couple just to help to make them stand out a little bit more. And finally, a few little dots of light in the very far distance just to look like street lamps and shop lights and things like that in the far distance just to add a bit of continuity as the eye travels back into the distant part of the painting. I'm going to leave it at that now and remove the tape and have a look at it. Um, you'll probably remember that I drew in a couple of people on the far right in the foreground in pencil to start with. Um, I'm still undecided about them. I shall wait and have a look at the painting and see how it looks with the tape off. I've got a feeling that I'm going to paint them in, but I want to just check and see first, see how it looks before I commit to that. Just get some little bit of tape and bring that painting back into the frame. Now I like it and I think it's more or less finished as it is, but I do think that that area on the right side, that dark wall, is just a big blank space. So I think I'm going to bite the bullet and um, paint in two more figures. As with the first figures, I want to keep them in proportion and in scale and in perspective with the rest of the painting. So I'm going to make sure that my head, or heads, because I'm going to do two people here, um, are the same height as the heads of the other figures. And that should keep them looking even. I have to make them larger, more silhouetted. I have to make sure as well that they, their legs end and so they look like they're standing on the pavement. And the shape has to be reasonably good here as these people are in the foreground. I'm going to have one gentleman uh, with a sort of a, a hat and a lady next to him. And hopefully they'll just finish off the painting, give me that sort of film noir look if I can get it right. A sort of mysterious idea of who are these people lurking in the shadows. This again is my small generic Chinese calligraphy brush. It's just one that I found cheaply on eBay. I think the hairs are about one and a half centimetres long. That's about three quarters of an inch long if you're looking for something similar. I forgot to mention what my paper is. It's Milford, 140 pound paper. Um, it's 100% cotton and it's a really good paper. It stays nice and wet for a long time and you can lift quite well from it as well. It's a beautiful paper, one of my favorites. Uh, my paper as well was taped to my board with normal decorators masking tape and my board was at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees, which helps with the flow of paint when you're painting wet in wet. I've just dabbed out a bit of paint there um, from the second figure because I wasn't too happy with the shape. So I'll work back in again 
see if I can improve that. And I think I'm much happier with that. And hopefully you can see the little line on the top of the larger figure's head it looks a bit like a sort of a, a hat, a trilby or something like that. Putting in the shadow carefully across the street. Now I've just taken some tissue and carefully dabbed out two spots where the faces are and as soon as those are dry um, I shall go in with a tiny bit of my burnt sienna and on the hand of the gentleman and finally a couple of white gouache highlights. And then maybe just a few more little touches of the white gouache while I've still got some on my brush on the cars, just where it's lightened back a little bit more as it's dried. So here's the finished painting. I've managed to take a better photograph of it in better light because I think the light was very bleached out in my studio that day. Uh, one of these days I'll get some better lights. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this scene come together. As I said at the beginning, let me know if you'd like me to maybe see if I can paint some more of these because I really enjoyed it. But it's quite a sort of a different genre to have to paint and it'll take me a little bit of practice to get used to that kind of thing again. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports the channel on Patreon. We really do appreciate you. I'll see you again soon. Take care and have a fabulous week.